And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, Tom Vassell here, and today we're taking a look at the new version of Sidero Confluence from WizKids. Sidero Confluence was a surprise hit from WizKids. It was a game most people didn't know how to pronounce and or know much about it, and this game made a pretty big to-do. It is definitely the style game that's not going to be for everyone. It is a long negotiation game, and it's incredibly fun, but it is the kind of game that I prefer to play at a convention because I want to get a lot of people together. I think it plays best with five, six, or seven players, And but it is all about converting cubes into other cubes, but working with other people to create the scenario confluence, but you want to create it in the way you want it to be created. Well, now we have the new version of it, which vastly improves on it. One of the biggest complaints about it was this looks super mundane. The new one with the artwork from Quanchimore, um, and just, it has a, I mean, WizKids has way revamped the components. So this video is not about Sidero Confluence. If you want to know how to play it or how the game works a little bit, check out my original review for it. This is just comparing the two of them and telling you why the new one's better, because I'm not going to pretend that it's any other thing. So here's the two covers side by side, and I actually don't hate this cover, you know, it, it doesn't look super exciting, but it's kind of neat to see the different constellations and stuff. This one has, well, it has, you know, that artwork on it, which is kind of unique and interesting. I think this one will attract more people. I think this is one that people will walk by on the shelves, but that's eh, just a box cover. Let's look inside. Here we have a much bigger difference here between the rule books. So the original rule book, I'm not going to argue and complain that it was bad. I go through, has a picture set up, that's something I want, and then has the rules. There's not that many rules in the games themselves with a little bit of flair into it. The new rule book here is just full of pictures, really well done. Again, it shows a picture of setup, but also shows a picture of all the different cards and how everything works, and this is a really well done really nice rule book that gives examples and clear everything. Then we have also a teaching guide that comes with a new one that gives you just an overview when you're teaching new people. This is a really big deal because Sidereal Confluence is a bit of a bear to teach people. And that's because a lot of the rules are actually here. Now this is the original one and the new one they're on tiles. So you can see here and both of them tell you how to pronounce it. Kajajjavik Kalim, uh, whatever. Uh, and then we have the new one here. So this is a one-sided sheet here. The new one has stuff on both sides. So, but it's smaller, it takes up less table space. So here you have the background and this is basically startup. Here you have your setup, blah, blah, blah. That's all you need for the starting stuff. Then you turn it over and this is what you need for during the game. And so each one is that same way. You turn the new ones over. They also have a picture. Um, I didn't actually, let's compare this. So here you can see the pictures are pretty much the same. So it's the same artwork for the aliens on each one. The main difference would be for uh, the last one here, the Federan Conclave, the original sheet actually used both sides. And so what they did here was there's two boards for them because they have more rules and things. And so they actually have three sides. I don't know any way around that. Um, I like the boards better myself because the boards take up less room on the table and you're going to need that extra room. So now here's where we have one of the big changes of the new ones. These are the new resources. Here are examples of the old resources. So the old ones were wooden cubes. Now there's one negative thing about the new cubes is that occasionally you can see it on some of these cubes where they were cut off the sprue. You can see some white dots that I find that to be a little bit annoying. These are plastic compared to wooden, but the original ones we have these small cubes which are not as worth as much as the large ones. You can see the white and the yellow here. Here I have the white and the yellow. Can you tell the size difference at all? It's a huge difference. And these little wooden hexagons here, these are amazing. I really like these components here so much better than the original ones. But 
I mean, this is going to be a matter of semantics. It's bigger. But in this case, seeing the vast size difference between these and these in the course of this game where these are more valuable than these, that makes a big difference and it helps a lot uh, for trading purposes. And these are just fantastic. And having these be almost the same size as the big cubes also helps, again, for trading purposes. So let's take a look at the cards for each of the different races here on this particular one. So this is the old stuff here on the bottom and the and the new stuff we have at the top and so the shield you'll notice the old shield and the new shield are pretty much the same here they have all the stuff written on it the new one just has some ma some minor stuff and then you have a card this is much better because when you're using a shield you don't want to have to keep pulling up to look at it it's much easier to have a card and again when you look at the iconography on these cards it's really clear like here's the starting card for the new one the starting card you can just see it looks dated let's take a look at some of the technologies, this is the exact same one here. So planetary ecological dominance here. They have the background here, which is hard to read on. Here with the space background, and you got the green on the side, so you know which race it is. It's just much better than the new one, especially when you flip them over. When you flip this one over, ah, it just, I mean, don't get me wrong. It was functional and it worked. I just think the new one looks much, much better. So I really like that. Uh, tokens are pretty much the same in, in both games. I just thought that this was a much better look, the, the new one here. This is, other than the cubes, I think this is the biggest difference in how the cards look, and they're just a lot clearer on how each of them works. I mean, uh, let, me, let me show you some close-ups of the cards. And again, this isn't going to mean, you know, you're just looking at these and it's just transferring stuff into other things. I just think it does a really good job at conveying the information on them. And then finally, if it matters, there's a nice insert for the new one. I'm actually going to be taking this insert out because I like to have everything for one race bag together. So that, you know, like this is how I have it set in the old one. So you grab a race and here's everything you need for the And at Ascendancy. It's all one bag, including tokens and cards and everything. And I think that's better. This is nice, though, so some people prefer this more. Um, and the tokens themselves are really nice. They're much better than the original tokens. It wasn't that the original tokens were bad. It's just that the new ones look a lot nicer and really easy to tell how many points you have. And this is fader and safe. You know, they work with some of the stuff. So uh, overall, really happy with the new components of the new game. I think it's vastly better. Hey, credit to where credit is due. For the past couple years, we have been constantly saying that WizKids games just don't have good production value. They do now. And this isn't the only one. We'll be talking about this in other games. Uh, but Sidero Confluence here, the remastered edition, is don't get this one. Get the new one. Now, if you already have this one, it, switching for the new one, it's not, as far as I can tell, there's almost no rule changes. It's all in, you know, component quality. The problem is... If, if you don't have one, get this one. If you have the old one, I don't know that I would get rid of it. If you play it all the time, it's one of your favorite games, then obviously upgrade. But if you don't own it at all, obviously get the new one. So not much more I can say. It is basically just an upgrading components, but wow, a good one. And if you've never played this before and you're still confused, I'm telling you, it is an excellent game. It's not for everyone. It's a bit esoteric because it's a big trading game that then comes down to you converting cubes into victory points somehow but a lot of fun, and I'm certainly glad that this remastered version exists. I'm Tom Vassell. You've been watching The Dice Tower.